Welcome. I think this is my third and final talk for the event. Um, introduce myself again. I'm Ken Lane. I'm an API evangelist. Uh, my, my role is to uh, evangelize APIs to non-developers and business leaders around the world. Uh, I don't just evangelize to developers. I, I want to make uh, business leaders uh, aware of the power of APIs. And so this is what I do for a living. This is all I do is evangelize APIs. My talk today is going to be uh, on business models for your API. Excuse me, <laughs> my voice stops working. Business models for your API as a startup. So I had this idea for a startup the other night. It's a great idea. I think it's going to be big. I have an idea. I want to, uh, it's an SMS service. I want to em empower people to d communicate within small groups, send and receive small messages back and forth, just with a limit of 140 characters. So I built the site the other night. I think it's going to be big. I think it's going to be a, a, a big idea, but we'll see. I need a business model, though. I don't know how I'm going to make money, I'm gonna, how I'm going to make it work. But uh, you know, I'm getting a lot of validation for my idea. People seem interested. People, but they, they, they're asking for new features. They want more stuff. They want mobile apps, desktop apps, widgets, buttons, raw data. They want access to the data behind the scenes. So I'm going to launch an API. People can build their own features. You know, I'm going to crowdsource my company. I'm going to make it so that the community builds things. It's all about developer power. I'm going to focus on what I do best. I'm going to let the community deliver everything else. I'm going to let it, I'm going to hopefully evolve it into a large ecosystem of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of developers. But I remember, uh, my photos aren't working very well there, but I remember Guillaume saying yesterday from 3Scale that, you know, I should have an API for my business model, not a business model for my API. And I don't, you know, I, I want to make money doing this, and I don't want to look stupid. Sorry, that doesn't fit on there. But, uh, you know, so which business model works for my startup? You know, do I want to do advertising? I really don't want to do advertising. That's just too easy. Everyone's doing it. Um, I don't want it to clutter things up. I think I can make money off a of premium feature, selling premium accounts, um, add-ons that are going to make people's lives easier. But really, I want things to be free. I want it to be free and open. That's important. So I'm going to combine those ideas into you know, free and premium into what I'm calling freemium. And then you know, I, you know, I want people to only pay for what they use, pay as they go. I want, I want them to pay for things that, that, that I have to pay money for. So content storage, bandwidth. You know, I'm going to have premium widgets analytics that they can pay for and, and, and upsell to, um, you know, corporate accounts, you know, that aren't just individuals. Verified accounts, so we know who, you know, which each users are. But I don't want it to be too confusing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple pricing tiers, you know, a basic, a pro, and an enterprise that really lump all these together, but really have a pay as you go beyond that. So there, there's kind of a ceiling to that. So everyone knows where they fit, what's it's going to cost them. And uh, yeah, I spelled enterprise right. That was good. Um, all right, I got a business model. So I'm going to launch the API now. I feel better now. I, I focus on a business model. I'm going to make some money off my core users. Now I can launch an API for that business model. I'm not out there with an API looking for a way to make money. So I'm following the rules. I launched my API. Well, I'm going to transfer some of that business model to my API. I'm going to you know, create some, some tiers for my developers now, too. I'm going to give them some tiers so that they know where they fit in. Um, again, i got a freemium layer. I'm going to let them come in and start playing around. But then they can, they can grow and, and, and grow into other tiers and, and start paying me more money. But, you know, I really want to incentivize quality API usage. I just don't want people using it for, for, for reasons, you know, that don't really fit into my core goals as a business. 
So I'm going to create a kind of developer affiliate program that people can sign up for, you know, if they're in the free tier or any of the paid tiers. You know, and when they send new users my way through their apps and things they build, I'm going to give them credit against their account. I'm going to allow them to reduce their bill and their data usage by sending me new users, end users. And then when they send me new users that become premium users, I'm actually going to give them a piece of the action. I'm going to bring them in and give them revenue share. And then I'm going to give them revenue share on the premium pay-as-you-go services. I'm going to cut them in on a piece of all of the action. I want my developers to be really incentivized to do the best for my business and, and what's going on and really respect the API. So this works great. I'm feeling good. You know, things are working. But, you know, I notice some people are kind of gaming the system, kind of, you know, trying to figure out ways that they can reduce their bill, you know, by sending me fake users. You know, so there's, you know, this is a global system. It's growing fast. I've got people who are trying to exploit things. And, you know, luckily, you know, they just get credit, so their bill ends up being zero. Doesn't really hurt me too bad. But, you know, I really want to incentivize quality, you know, developers to send quality users that are going to stick around and buy my premium services. So I got to figure out a way of incentivizing that, you know, so that they really um, are motivated to, to, to understand their user base and, and what I'm wanting. So I'm going to create different affiliate tiers. I'm going to create a 5, 10, and 15 percent level. And th that's what I'm going to cut you in on if you bring me quality traffic, quality users. I'm going to actually cut you in on that and, and, and make you a lot of money potentially. So the platform's growing. People are building cool stuff. They're building widgets, Android apps, iPhone apps, desktop apps, buttons, badges, widgets. All the things I don't have the money to build and I'm incentivizing them in a proper way to build quality apps for me and drive quality business to my core offering. Well, you know, I took a lot of money to do this. I had took several rounds of funding. My VCs are kind of strong arming me. So I, I didn't want to do advertising, but, you know, my VCs gave me about, a, you know, $500 million. So I got to kind of, you know, I got to listen to them. So I'm going to do promoted accounts. I'm going to do promoted messages. But you know what? I'm going to cut my developers in on that too. Why not? You know, I don't want them filtering out ads. I want to incentivize proper behavior. So I'm actually going to cut them in on some of that ad revenue. I'm not excluding them from the process. I'm actually going to bring them into the fold and make them part of my company and, and, and invested part of my, the ecosystem. So I'm going to provide competitive PPC and other, you know, uh, so that they don't go out to other ad networks, filter out my ads and put in their own ads or, uh, you know, a higher paying ad. So I'm going to pay competitive prices to my developers. I'm going to treat them fair. So the business model is working. I got thousands of users, thousands of developers, thousands of apps. I'm making money. Developers are making money. Everyone's happy. It's a business model. It's feeling solid. It's feeling good. But, you know, I got developers with higher needs. You know, some of them, you know, they're fitting in there, but, you know, they, they're, they're exploding in, in their, their usage. They're not making enough revenue. They have kind of higher needs. They need more data. They need, they're sucking more bandwidth than my tiers will allow. The pay-as-you-go pay is working, but really they just kind of, you know, they're rocketing past that. They're, they're my kind of rock star developers. And they need more support. They need more revenue share. I want to make sure they're successful and they're not going to collapse because they're building features and tools that I want. So I want them to be successful. So I'm going to set up a kind of partner program to kind of funnel these people into. You know, I'm not going to let anybody in. I'm going to make them apply for it. I'm going to identify their needs. And then I'm going to invest in them. I'm going to invest in them, bring them into kind of a little closer, bring them in a little closer into the company. You know, it's still an external ecosystem. You know, there's plenty of rev share, plenty of opportunities, but I want these guys to come in closer because they're building stuff I need and I haven't had the resources to build myself. So I'm bringing them internal. I'm reducing their usage costs. I'm giving them higher revenue even beyond my affiliate program. You know, I'm going to give them 20, 25, 30% and actually up their revenue so that they can cover their costs as a business. I'm going to incentivize the right behavior and, you know, I'm going to communicate this par partner program 
publicly in my developer ecosystem and let people know that you know this exists it's exclusive you have to do certain things I'm gonna incentivize people and use it as kind of a carrot to make sure developers are doing good things but I got a lot of operational costs but you know what I'm offsetting that you know API usage like 75 percent of, of my operational costs but I'm gonna offset that you know the developers are funding that you know if they're if they're not building things or doing things with my API that I want that benefit my core business I'm gonna charge them for that I'm gonna you know create tariffs and taxes you know in the forms of fees you know if they want large data sets and large volumes of data that cause bandwidth and and I need to make money that's our content and our data I'm gonna charge them for it and they're gonna pay for this bandwidth and pay for the cost of the network the developers who are doing the things that I want done in my network I'm gonna lower their costs and bring it down so that offsets and, and, and achieves the goals that I want while paying for my infrastructure costs with the bad behavior and hopefully some of those people are, aren't gonna be sustainable and they're gonna go away or they're gonna keep paying for it because they're they are sustainable and it still pays for my costs so there's more demand on the API more they pay and it's going to reward the positive behavior and it's unwanted behavior is going to pay all right my business model is looking pretty good I got free users I got paid users I've got free developers I got paid developers I got this whole partner program it's looking pretty good I got this whole business model with a with a sexy you know monetization layer in there the money's coming in but you know what? I got some partners who are just you know they're just doing really good stuff. Their teams are rock stars. They really jive with my core business model. I want to continue investing in that. You know, I need the talent. I can't hire people fast enough. These are the teams. They they know my API. They know my core business model. They understand what I'm doing. They've proven it by delivering features that my users want and that I'm interested in as far as my core offering. They became my R&D development, my business development, all rolled into one. So I want to provide some sort of deeper investment. I'm going to kind of incubate these guys. You know, I'm going to turn this into a, a Y Combinator, my ecosystem, my partner program. I'm actually going to acquire some of these guys. I'm going to do it in a healthy way. I'm going to communicate that out. Just like my partner program, I'm actually going to tell when I prepare someone to incubate them and then acquire them, I'm going to tell that to the community and I'm going to use that as another carrot and another incentive for developers for the proper behavior within my developer ecosystem. So developers are striving for that. Everyone wants to build a successful company and be acquired. I'm going to create that, that within my API ecosystem. It's going to further incentivize them. So here's what my business model is looking like. It's looking pretty healthy. I mean, that's a pretty healthy developer ladder, you know, to rise up. You know, I mean, we got active users, we got active developers, and really a, a, a clear path for them to go that's going to benefit me, make me money, grow my company. I'm going to have talent. I'm going to have new features, all this stuff, all the things I want, and it's going to come externally and come internal, and I'm going to grow my business in that way. But let's not forget that you know my API isn't all just about direct value and direct money. You know I, I'm going to use this as a marketing vehicle. My this whole ecosystem is about you know generating brand awareness, marketing my company, marketing the ecosystem, marketing my brand, and making people aware of what we're doing in a healthy way. Create a lot of SEO traffic, all these widgets and buttons and links and all this stuff all over the people's sites and apps. It's going to drive social traffic my way. You know, the, some of these developers are going to become evangelists. Some of them aren't going to build tools that are going to be sustainable businesses and become partners and, and rise up the chain. They're actually just going to be out there doing cool things and having fun and talking about what's going on. So they're evangelists. So I shouldn't expect everyone to rise up the ladder. I want evangelists. I want people out there talking about what I'm doing. It's the most healthiest type of evangelist that you can, you can produce. So I'm happy. My VCs are happy. Developers are happy, users are happy, users are important. You know, if this is all hypothetical, of course. I, I don't have any startup aspirations, and that was Twitter. But, uh, you know, don't think about stealing my idea, because I'm going to do it. That's it. It's my startup.
Questions, thoughts? I mean, that is based upon Twitter. You know, I did that. Um, I spent 60 days researching Twitter's whole past. I went back and pulled every tweet, every communication they did, every blog post, every TechCrunch story, and kind of analyzed what Twitter did. Because in my mind, Twitter is the poster boy of how to do it right and how to do it totally wrong, too, all in the same time. So I really wanted to understand what they did and try to understand um, you know, how you could find a business model within all of that. You know, of course, you know, some of these concepts didn't even exist in 2006, 2007. The whole pay-as-you-go cloud model was kind of evolving then. So I don't want to be too hard on Twitter, but um, you know, that's some of the thoughts that Twitter should have had, and that's based upon a lot of research looking at how they did it. So, you know, that's, that's my, my viewpoint. I think it's things, you know, it's actually based upon all of those uh, business models are based upon John Musser, a friend of mine who runs Programmable Web. He's got a nice tree of, of all those models. They're all reflected in there. Basically, you know, free pay-as-you-go, developer incentives, affiliate programs, those are all real-life business models based upon what's out there in the field and what people are doing. And looking through all the Programmable Web APIs, you know, I've actually pulled examples from that. So that's, you know, even though that was a slightly fictional story, it's, it's based in reality, so. I don't, I don't think there's any right. I mean, I think we're all going to, you know, evangelism for me is figuring it out as we go along. So there's no right way to repeat your question. Is there any examples of, of doing it right? Um, you know, where I've exercised that model, um, one example is uh, City Grid, which is so City Search. It's a, the parent company is called IAC. They go, oh, we got some new features. Here's what we're doing. But they start with talking about their developers, and they have a whole doer showcase. They, um, you know, they have all these contests, all these things that really focus on highlighting developers and their success, and showcasing them. And make, you know, developers want to be rock stars. They want, and they want to make money too. So if you can make developers feel successful, they're gonna like love and be super passionate about you. And you know, develop uh, Twilio developers will defend Twilio to no end. I mean, Twilio's made some missteps. You know, they did like an OAuth thing that wasn't like OAuth, but they called it OAuth-like, and, and they stumbled and people flamed them for it, and then developers, you know, defended them, you know, and so how you build that, there's no like perfect science to how you build evangelists, but, you know, you got to really showcase, you know, and bring we, we, events. And you say paid evangelists are credible to the community? Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody knows you're paid by yeah, no, paid, paid evangelists are becoming less and less credible. You know, I've been working myself out of a job, basically, by talking about that. And, you know, the more evangelists that come on the scene, and, you know, they're coming from uh, non-engineering disciplines. They're coming from marketing backgrounds and sales backgrounds. So they're basically sales guys. And they go to these hackathons and these other developer events, and they're not um, engaging with developers, and they're giving evangelists a bad name. So um, a lot of companies are hiring evangelists and not calling them evangelists. They're calling them ambassadors, advocates. Um, and they have lots of other you know, funny names that you wouldn't even know it's an evangelist to try to change that dynamics, but it's getting worse and worse. So a paid evangelist is actually, I think, you know, it's something that I think the whole company should own, and there shouldn't be an evangelist because of that, that negative aspect. And you really want it to be spread internally and spread externally within your community. Can you um, also please explain how um, Twitter um, reached its developers best? What were the best <coughs> channels and, and the best... Uh, well... And, and, and the way that, what were the best mo yeah, channels how, how to reach the target audience? Yeah, so, I mean, Hacker News stumbled upon a Reddit are one of the three like social bookmarking channels, um, you know, Twitter or um, yeah, Twitter, Facebook, and GitHub, and LinkedIn, and Google Plus as far as social channels. So uh, Reddit and, and Hacker News and those are, are social bookmarking, where social networking works, but it works for different developers. You really have to understand your audience. So enterprise developers are heavy LinkedIn users. Where open developers are either on Twitter, Facebook, or GitHub, depending on kind of what markets or segments you're in. So you really want to find and understand your audience and figure out what social networks or social bookmarking sites they're on. So reaching them, and then you know, in the same way as far as evangelism, you have to reach them in a genuine and honest way. 
when you're reaching out over social networks or social bookmark, it has to be in a genuine way. You can't just like link spam and do stupid things because they're not going to care and you're not going to reach them, even if it is a good channel. So you have to have uh, honest and genuine stuff that developers care about. So, Any other questions? Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, there's lots of evidence. Um, you can go to uh, API Evangelist. I have the whole timeline. All my research is there, open source. And um, so I saw some, you know, in the early days, 2006. So they launched the API in, in September 2006. And then, so 2007 and 8, all they did was just like, you can see every blog post and every tweet was, Look at what someone did. It's so cool. Look at so and so built an Android this, an iPhone this, a widget this. We love you. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. And then 2008, 2009, they'd grown so much and their infrastructure load was so heavy and they didn't have a business model. That's what I allude to in there. And so they had to keep getting venture capital. And that's why I alluded to the whole VC thing. And so 2009, going into 2010, really 2009, they had a lot of uh, internal conflict. And um, you know, I know people who work there, so there's not a lot of evidence. It's very anecdotal. Um, they pushed out all the people who really believed in the API and the developer ecosystem, and they brought in teams of business people to satisfy the VC request. You got to think, by they're they're at 1.4 billion dollars of investment now. They got a Saudi oil prince. They got a Russian oil tycoon as one of their investors. I don't know if you've borrowed money from people, but I'm sure the pressure is pretty strong to like generate some return on that. So 2010, March, at, uh, is when the, it started changing. And they, they acquired uh, Tweety, and they started acquiring from the ecosystem without actually communicating out that whole process. That's why I said you got to actually, if you're going to acquire and do that, you got to communicate it. And that's where the relationship started taking a turn for the worse. And then basically it's been a whole series of missteps and miscommunications because they're not in tune with their developer ecosystem. They're, they're business folks that are in charge and they're more about becoming a, a media network than becoming a developer platform. So that's my opinion, but it's based upon evidence. Yeah, they just, you know, there's lots of quotes from Jack and Ev and, and Biz. You know, it's like, we're not focused on business model. We don't care. We want to be the greater good. We want to be the, the nervous system of, of the world. And so they just, you know, they were just very idealistic when they should have been at least cultivating something, you know, some premium features, something that would have brought in some revenue. And then the API, they had nothing. I mean, I would have paid for, for high volume data usage. And similar to the fire hose that emerged where they did charge for it, you know, even though it was very mysterious. So you had this wide open free and then this mysterious paid tier that nobody really knew about or how to get involved in. Where if they had had very clear kind of structure and, um, you know, they, that 75% API usage was based upon the actual Twitter. And if they had offset that with actual API charges like Amazon, you know, actually pay as you go. The more Amazon stores you use, the more you pay. So if Twitter had found something like that, they could have stabilized, offset their costs, um, and, and been a little bit more successful, I think, early on. They just waited way too long. <laughs>